Let's give God some praise.
seventh chapter. Verse 22 and verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter number seven. with those that has mistreated you, with 
with those that try to destroy you. Right. Sometimes God will allow you to occupy the land with your enemy. Anybody ever thought you lived with or was sleeping with the enemy? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> My God. Sometimes, look, 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 look I, if I got some husband and wives that don't mind telling the truth, even though you've been together 30 years, uh, even though you've been married five years, sometimes it can appear that you are living and sleeping with the enemy. But the good news is that God got it all under control. Uh, he was letting the children of Israel know, listen, I, I can't kill them all right now because you still need workers. Uh, sometimes the enemy, even though the enemy might, might be you, sometimes the enemy is still useful to the kingdom of God. Sometimes the enemy still might be useful to the upbuilding of God's house. And sometimes you got to work with folks even though you know they're talking about you. Sometimes you got to deal with folks even though you know they're lying on you. Yes, but sometimes God will allow you to occupy the promised land with your enemy. Yes, and that's so he can prepare us for the promised land. Yes, uh, sometimes we, we take on too much without preparation. Uh, uh, I have to admit it that when I first got married, I wasn't prepared for marriage. But thank God through His grace and His mercy. Yeah. Uh, because I hung in there. Yes, sir. Uh, because I didn't throw in the top. Uh, God raised me up in that thing that He had promised me. Yes, He did. And he didn't allow me to destroy my future. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Because I wasn't prepared. Oh, Lord. My, my, my preparation. Belle wasn't prepared for a Redonna Bell. Okay. Uh, she was advanced in age. Uh, she was advanced in a whole lot of stuff, but, but thank God he loved me enough. Yeah. He said, boy, I'm going to grow you up so you can handle this promised land. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank God that, that he didn't allow me yeah. to abort my promised land because I wasn't prepared. Yes, sir. Uh, he didn't allow the children of Israel because I'm sure in their mind they would have loved to kill off their enemies. Yeah. But God didn't Allow them to do that. Uh -huh. And what God is doing even now, yes, thank you, even during this pandemic, Come on. God is preparing us yes. for the promised land. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for my promised land. All right. All right. Uh, I'm sick and tired of wandering yeah. right. around the wilderness. I'm, I'm ready to receive. Everything that God has for me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And sometimes, if we honest with ourselves, sometimes what God has for us is too much right now. Yes, uh, but I thank God through maturity. Uh, Elder Cole, he can trust me with money. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Tell me and see, Lord. He can trust me with things because uh, I'm mature in the things of God. Well, thank you, Lord. And how many of you would like to experience an explosion of God? Yes. Uh, an explosion of God's power yes. to enter in the land flowing with milk and honey. A blessing beyond numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, with houses you didn't build. Right. Uh, wells you did not dig. 
a vineyard you did not plant. All of your enemies that are scattered before you. Your enemies that you will see no more. Uh, uh, an abundance that's simply beyond belief. Uh, how many of you would like to enjoy that promised land? Uh, that's what God has created for you in the precious promise of the word of God. It is a gold mine uh, of unsearchable riches of Christ. And all of those promises are available to every person in this audience and to the millions that are watching around the world. You can be confessing. I said you can be prophesied to the millions uh, that are watching around the world. Uh, we need to prepare ourselves for the promised land. Uh, in uh, Matthew 24, uh, Jesus told them, he said, take heed that no man deceives you. And we need to understand that there are two problems uh, that we must deal with uh, before we go into the promised land. Yeah. Come on. And one of them is deception. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Uh, Matthew 24, 4 says, Take heed that no man deceives you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, say with me that. Take heed. Come on, you can do better than that. Say, take heed. Take heed. That no man. No man. Come on, y'all. That no man. That no man. Deceives you. Deceives you. Uh, Paul says in 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verse number three, let no man deceive you. Uh, the two most powerful personalities in the New Testament warn the church. Uh, through Jesus Christ and Paul, uh, they warned the church about deception. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 14 said, Men lie and wait to deceive you. Uh, deception is defined as someone who thinks he's right, but he's not. Uh, the disciples asked Jesus for a sign of the end of the world. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, it is deception. And then you hear people say, oh, pastor, I, I would never been, or I have never been deceived. Uh, I'm so mature. Uh, I've been saved for six weeks. And now I got a deliverance ministry. And I'm purified beyond imagination. Yeah, okay. But here's the Bible verse to help you. If we say we have no sin. The word says we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. We need to understand that the greatest deceiver you will ever know is you. Lord Jesus. Somebody say the greatest deceiver. You will ever know is you. Okay. I'm going to let you think on that for a moment. Uh, the greatest deceiver you will ever know is you about yourself. The heart is deceitful above all else. Uh, why do I say that? Because young people say, well, I'm just following my heart. Uh, uh, we need to understand that's one of the dumbest things we can ever do is to follow our heart because the heart is desperately wicked. Or deceitful above all. Uh, we must be careful where your heart will take you. Uh, 
without the word of God. Amen. Uh, America today is in a crisis yeah. of deception. It's election time. Oh, and America is in a crisis All right. of deception. Say that. Say, say it. Yes. Uh, we yes. not only have to deal with worldly deception, yes. but we must deal with religious deception. Yes, sir. Yes. Paul yes. called it the doctrine of demons. Yes, What's that? Uh, what is the doctrine of demons? Uh, a doctrine of demons is presenting another way uh, to salvation other than through Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. Uh, listen to this clearly. There is no name given among men whereby we might be saved other in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ, uh, in, in, uh, in chapter number four, he said, I am the way. Yeah. Uh, I am the truth and the life. And there is no other. No other. Acts chapter number four, uh, verse number 12. Uh, somebody ought to give them praise right there for being the way. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, Thank you. When Israel was sacrificing their children yes. uh, to the God Molech, yes. uh, God sent to them or put them in captivity. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Why? To show that there was no other God. There was no other way yes. than Jesus the Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. America's the number one problem is not the economy. Mm. No. No, sir. Mm. America's number one problem is not the pandemic. No, sir. Mm. America's number one problem is God. Yes, sir. Uh, why? Because God always judges sin. Yes. We can try to blame the pandemic. We can try to blame the academy. Yeah. But the bottom line is God is judging sin. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and the first step in deception is the rejection of the truth. When we reject truth, all that is left to us is a lie. When we reject this, we cut the rope to uh, that anchors and holds our souls on course with Jesus Christ. Thank you. Uh, we need to understand that Satan first attacked in the Garden of Eden uh, with Adam and Eve was to attack the very word yes. of God. Yes. Had God said, did God really mean what he said? Uh, 6,000 years later, we have the agency uh, compromising uh, coward Christians are saying, did God really mean that? I mean, after all, that was a thousand years ago. Surely he changed his mind. Uh, but I'm here to let you know that uh, God said, I am God. Yes, sir. Yes. And I change not. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Uh, what is God's position on lying? He said, All liars shall have their part. Hallelujah. In the lake of fire. Uh, by the way, for those that don't understand, the lake of fire is hell. Uh, that's pretty clear. Uh, you don't need to be a rocket scientist uh, to pick that up that the liar, uh, the church gossiper, uh, the raper will walk the same fire of 
hell. Lord. Jesus. Uh, some might say, Pastor, I don't believe in hell. Well, that's too bad. It's still there, and you're still going, and we don't accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. Uh, we need to bring back the revival of righteousness. Uh, bring back the works of ethics that God established in the first book of Genesis. Uh, we need to bring back the Ten Commandments. We need to bring back integrity. Yes. We need to bring back individual responsibility. All right. uh, we need to bring back those core values that made America great. Yes, Lord. Uh, we need to take our country back, uh, right. not with deception, right. but we need to take our country back with the truth of God's words. Yeah. I know this might be tough to swallow, but all God is saying in this hour is allow me to be God. Uh, allow me to be truth yes, yes. and every man a liar. Yes, the second problem uh, we must solve to get into the promised land and to get into the provision of God is temptation. How do you respond in the hour of temptation? All right. All right. Just ponder on that for a moment. How do you respond in the hour of temptation? Why does God allow temptation? I believe that God allowed temptation so we can find out what's really in us. Uh, we take, we can tell the church uh, anything. Uh, we can say I love the Lord and I love this and I love that, but God allows you to go through temptation so he can see what's really in you. Ask your neighbor, what's, what's you working with? Uh, what's in you? What's in your heart? Uh, we know that God is everywhere. So if God is everywhere, then why do he allow temptation? Why do he allow us to go through a test that we have the potential to fail? Uh, God is omnipresent, yes. is that right? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, how can I explain that? Uh, let me see. A good illustration is me and Madonna abide in the same house. Mm -hmm. I remember one day she knew I was home. She was downstairs working. I was upstairs hanging stuff up in my closet. And when she came upstairs and opened the door, she said, <laughs> uh, she was afraid. Uh, uh, she was afraid because uh, she knew I was in the house, but she didn't know where I was in the house. Right. Uh, I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, God sometimes tempt us even though he's omnipresent. Uh, because he needs us to be aware consciously yeah. about him. Uh, he don't want to have to always have a cross hanging on our back. He needs us uh, uh, to live for him and to serve him as we prepare to go into the promised land. Uh, uh, he needs us to live for him even though we might not feel yeah. his presence. Yeah. 
everybody in here still have a consciousness of God. Uh, uh, God will tempt us to find out what's really in our heart. Yes. Uh, we talked about it today in Elder the Minister's class today that there will be some that cry, Lord, Lord. Yes. Lord, Lord. Did I preach in your name? Yes. Did I cast out demons in your name? Yes. And he said, I'll say to them, depart from me. Mm. Mm. You workers of iniquity. Yes. I never yes. knew you. Yes. Why? Because it is impossible. For us to be serving God mm. and lose the consciousness mm. of God. Mm. It is possible for us to be preaching and teaching and singing every Sunday. Mm. But we lose the consciousness yes. of God. Mm. We're not the only one. Uh, Genesis, the 22nd chapter, verse number 2, God tempted Abraham. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, Abraham, take now thy son. Mm -hmm. And he had to be pacific. He said, take now thy son, thy, thy only son, Isaac. Because you know, if he had to offer any son for a sacrifice, he would have took Ishmael. But he said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, and offer him up for a sacrifice unto me. And you know the word. Uh, Abraham, without thinking, without questioning, he did what the Lord said. He started out to the place where God had instructed him to go. He didn't ask Sarah. Because Sarah would say, you're not taking my baby nowhere. Mm -hmm. But he took his son up to the mountain. Mm -hmm. And there God saw that Abraham would withhold nothing from him. And sometimes God allows us to be tested to see where our heart is. To see where our commitment lies. To see where our faith level is. Yeah. Uh, uh, to see where we are. Yeah. Uh, instantly, Abraham <coughs> obeyed the Lord. Uh, another way, and I'm headed to my clothes, that God tempts us. Uh, uh, he, he tempts us like he did Judas. Uh, God gave every person uh, an opportunity uh, to see where your heart is. What's important to you. Jesus, I mean Judas portrayed Jesus for 38 pieces a silver. That's another way God tempts us. Uh, that's why we have to get uh, deal with this whole issue of deception and temptation before we enter into the promised land. Uh, God said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall God cause men to give unto you? And so God had to deal with us in those areas of deception and temptation so that when we cross over into our Jordan, when we cross over into our promised land, uh, we can remain in the place of promise. Why? Because we have been tried yes. by fire. Yes. <clears throat> I'm convinced that even as I see how this nation uh, uh, is handling the pandemic, we 
we have been tried by the fire. And I don't know about you, but uh, my suffering has shown me that God has been faithful to me. Yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, I don't have to worry about deception because I know for myself that God has been faithful to me. Yes. And I want to ask somebody here today, uh, is there a witness in the house that can say that God has been faithful to you? Uh, I might not have been at the Red Sea, but I had some Red Sea experience in my life. I might not see him turn water into wine. But I had some water turning to wine experience in my life. I might not have seen him raise the dead. But I've seen him raise some dead situations in my life. That's why the songwriter said, I was sinking yes. deep in sin. Oh, yeah. Far from the peace for sure. Yeah. Very deeply staying within. Singing the rise no more. I'm trying to tell somebody, I had some dead situations in my life. And I watched God bring those things. Life. I ain't trying to tell nobody uh, nothing that I haven't experienced about God. What I'm trying to tell you is that if we go to prepare for the promised land, we got to know without a shadow of a doubt that God will make a way out of no way. That God Give me my mountain. 
in the room. They was looking at him, no doubt. Okay, then some of them said, you still need all that land? You up in age? He said, just as I was. When it was first promised to me. He said, I'm just as strong. I'm just as bold. I'm just as bad. Now give me what I got coming. And I'm telling you, y'all the people of God, we are about to experience a season of blessings. Ooh, somebody believe it, just, just begin to pull it down on yourself. Lord, rain down on us. Ah. He said, I'm going to give you houses that you didn't build. I'm going to give you vineyards that you didn't have to plant. He said, show my Lord put Moses, so shall I be with you. He said, I'm going to open up supernatural doors. He said, I'm going to sit in the wind of wealth. He said, you ain't going to have to worry about nothing. Deception come in. Is he really going to bless your marriage? Is he really going to bless your children? Sometimes our eyes dictate different than what the promise says. Do I got a witness? It can look like you fell. It can look like things falling apart. But tell somebody, it's just deception. It's just deception. Don't tempt your own self out of your promise land. All right. Deal with the temptations of your spirit. Deal with the temptations of your mind. So you can remain in that place. He's preparing me. For something I can't handle right now. He's making me ready. Tell somebody, he's making me ready. Don't get off the potter's wheel. Oh my goodness. I'm telling y'all, I'm in I'm next in line. Just saying that, y'all. Everything connected to me when some of us might go astray, and you might have to play catch up. But tell somebody you still connected. Get back in the flow. Get back in the vein of God. I heard Elder Max say in class today that we are preach, we are seen, we are caused people to come to the Lord, and then us ourselves will become a castaway. But the devil is a liar. 
I ain't losing nothing else in this season. Hallelujah! Thank you. Yes. I ain't got nothing else to lose. Enough is enough. And too much is too much. I'm walking in the promises of God. And if it means I got to get back on the prayer wheel. I got to get back on it. You should have never got off of it. But since you know where you messed up, they get back on the prayer wheel. If it means you got to push that plate aside, push the plate aside. If it means you got to go back to your first love, go back. See, we worried about the wrong stuff. We worried about what, what men say about us. But we should fear him that can cast both body and soul in the lake of fire. America's problem is not the economics. It's not the pandemic. It's that we have become familiar and we became in love with sin. And we got to deal with it. Doesn't matter, I got to deal with it. God is calling for holiness. He said, holiness without. No man shall see the Lord. I thought about the great leader Moses. Moses did all of that. He first hand handled the plagues. He led the children of Israel out of bondage. He led them across the Red Sea. But he could not enter into the promised land. Ooh, ain't that sad? He dealt with two million, over two million complaining people. He got frustrated and made one selfish mistake. And God judged him on it. And he could not enter into the promised land. Don't be deceived at the last minute and not get your promised land. Don't be tempted at the last minute and not receive your promise. I want everything that God has for me. I want the blessing of the Lord. And if he give it to me, can't nobody take it. Because the word of God declares that the blessings of the Lord make it rich. And it added no sorrow. He ain't gonna bless you with a house and you're gonna be crying. <laughs> I'm gonna pay for this. Yeah. If it's from him, the blessings of the Lord. Do I got anybody believing it? He ain't gonna give you a car. And have you crying the next month about how you're gonna pay the note? Why? Because the blessings of the Lord make it rich. And not give you the wherewithal to deal with it. Why? Because the blessings of the Lord make. Thank you, 
Sometimes we got to send turbulence. But some of us hard headed. We just aren't. Sometimes he got to send turbulence. I know he had to do me a lot, Carl, because I'm just, I was just hard headed. Don't touch that bell. Don't do that, Bell. Yes, they're devils. And, oh, I see, I, I got to hoop you a little longer. What would you withhold from me? What would you keep from me? He said, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything to hard for me? I can't feed you. I can't open the door. I cause birds quail to forget how to fly in the wilderness. They just drop down on people. They even pick them up and clean them and cook them. And that was in the wilderness. Before the birds came in the season, he said, I fed you now. He said, all you had to do is just go out there and get what you needed for the day. Your three meals. Have I not proven to you? Then I'm a God that keeps my promise. I'm a God that keeps my word. He said, I am God. I change not. Five o'clock this morning, I rolled over and hugged Redonna. And I said, baby, the Lord has made room for us. And we instantly begin to lift up our head and begin to magnify God. Because we can remember, hallelujah, when it seemed like that the struggle was so great. I remember when it looked like we couldn't make ends meet. Thank you, Jesus. I remember when it looked like we didn't have enough to feed our children. But God remained faithful. And now He prepared us. For the promised land. And I ain't gonna blow it again. Over hard headed and stiff necked people, I promise you, I will. I guarantee you, I'm going into the promised land. Thank you, Jesus. Choose ye this day whom you gonna serve. He said, Let it be the gods of your father. But you can serve me. I choose God. And if by chance somebody hear under the sound of my voice, and you recognize that you're in preparation mode, you're going to your promised land. You're in preparation mode before you go into your Jordan, before you go into your Canaan. We hear. If you need prayer, if you need to give your life back to the Lord, if you need to do your first words over, this altar is open for you. You can come. There's somebody watching by social media via our website. You need to come back to your first love. He said, I'll never leave you. He said, I won't forsake you. He said, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. Come back to him. Come back to him while you still have time. No man, no woman knows the day, nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. But it behooves us to be ready.
We see that none, but we know there's plenty of room in our Father's kingdom. Come on, clap your hand and give God some praise. Hallelujah, my eyes are open. Come as we prepare to give. As we prepare to give. I'm, I'm telling y'all, listen, you got to know that this is a prophetic time. On last week, we needed 20 people to give $150 so we could pay off our second mortgage. Bring that down just a little bit. I want them to hear me. Listen, we only $1,000 away. We done good. Listen, we, we called the bank to see what it was that we had to pay, how much interest they were going to have to drop off. Do you know they tried to discourage us why we should stay in debt? Yes. <laughs> I said that that was a lie. They tried to discourage us why the church wouldn't, shouldn't be debt free. But well, notice it will be paid off in June uh, if you just stay on with us, you won't have no early uh, early penalty for becoming debt free. But tell somebody we want to be debt free. And the penalty was paid on the cross. I desire to be debt free. And for those of you that have not had a chance to sow your 150, uh, it's not too late. We still a thousand dollars away. But listen. We ready. I don't care what the penalty is. If you out there in Facebook, social media, you want to sow a seed, you can do it via face, Facebook. You can do it via our Cash App, Dollar Sign Romy Church. You can go on our website, www.romychurch.life. And you can pay through PayPal or Givelify. But whatever you do, I'm asking you, Romy Church, those that are listening to us, sow a seed. We don't care about the penalty. We'll pay whatever that penalty is to be debt free. Because that means we have no one hanging over us no more. Why? Because we're preparing to go into the promised land. And I don't want to go into the promised land with debt hanging over my head. And we need to kill that second mortgage. So for those of you that can Outside of your tithe and offering, it's still not too late. Do that. And for those of you, if you're ready to give, come on. Bring your love seat to the Lord. Give them and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together. And running over shall call. God calls men to give. Look at all that money. Connie's just dropping money everywhere. Boy, I tell you. And I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for everyone that believed. Listen, God is still a good God and he's worthy to be praised. Yes. Yes. Has everyone had a chance to give? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. God, we thank you because we believe in God that this is going to be enough. For debt cancellation on our second mortgage, God. God, I ask you to bless the hand of those that sold, God. Bless those that even contemplating sowing right now. Even through social media, God, on our website, God. Bless them right now in the name of Jesus. Bless them some 30, some 40, and some 100 fold, God. Bless them right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for what you're doing in our life right now. God, as you prepare us to walk into our promised place, God. We thank you right now. We thank you because your blessing, God, your blessing is overtaking us and overshadowing us, God. We're going to walk in blessing, God. We're going to talk in blessing, God. We're going to live in your blessings because victory is our portion. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. amen. Come on, if you're a blessed person, hallelujah. I'm blessed because God said I'm blessed. As we prepare to leave this place, I ask you all to pray for Lady Bell. Lady Bell is, is down right now, but listen, 
I told him, go ahead and get it out your system because where we going, we ain't got time to be sick. We gonna walk in the blessings of the Lord. And y'all keep First Lady in prayer. Yeah, she hate when she's not here. I hate when she's not here, but you know, these, these bodies, listen, we ain't young spring chickens no more. We thank God for being able to spring as much as we can spring. <laughs> but we not spring chickens no more. Pray for her. Pray for her and pray for the ministry. Thank God for seeing all of you out today. Thank God for all of you. We pray the blessing of the Lord over your families and over your lives. I pray that everything you touch turns to gold. I pray that God's blessing will overshadow you, overtake you until we meet again. Everybody say amen. 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 Go in the blessing of the Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you.